Hi, friends. I'm Kim. And I'm Casey. We are back with another exciting rendition of questions we get asked all the time. Not an FAQ. That's something different. Not an FAQ. (laughs) And today... We are going to talk about reneging. Reneging, which I know causes a lot of stress and anxiety in students because if you just listen to companies, reneging is like the worst thing anyone can ever wait, do. Wait, wait, wait. There are some people here that don't know they need to be stressed about reneging yet. Casey, what is reneging? So when we say renege, what we mean is after you have received an offer to work at a company, either for internship or full time, usually get a digital or paper contract looking document. It's called an offer letter. It's an offer letter. It is a legal document and you do need to sign that document. Once you've signed it, you are... That's you indicating that you are making the commitment to join that company. Correct. It's not actually a contract. It's not like a legally binding responsibility to go work at that company, but it is a pretty formal. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's a formal promise that you're doing that. that. It's like your promise ring. Yes. (laughs) And the thing is, is when you renege, that's when you break that promise to join. That's when you decide to not do the internship, not do the full time. You renege on the offer. Exactly. And the reason that most people do this or are curious about doing this is because they found a different offer they're more interested in taking. Usually a better offer, a better offer, either compensation wise, a better offer, like name brand wise, a better offer, location, role, job content. There's a lot of reasons why like you might read. I would say the most common though is like literally more money. I agree. And especially too, because we have, you know, these offers that have the sort of like tight timeline. Sometimes, sometimes you get an offer and you only have a couple weeks to decide. So if you sign it and then months later find something different, you might be in a situation where you're considering reneging on your racial law. Yeah. So I think the thing that like stresses students out the most is like, what are the consequences yes. of reneging? And I would say there's like three different categories that we discussed, right? Yes. So the first one is consequences from your school. Right. Now, when I was working as a career advisor, um, at the UW, one of my jobs was to literally like write basically mean emails <laughs> to students who would read neg that were reported on by the company. Mm-hmm. Meaning so, what could have happened is if you renege on the offer, you tell them, just kidding, I break my promise. They might reach out to their contacts at your school to say you did that. Yeah. And like a lot of times, um, most, uh, most schools, especially if you go to like a top 20 computer science department, will have what's called a corporate affiliates program. And it's a program where employers, companies pay the school to come and recruit students at that school. So, I mean, you know, anywhere from like 10 to $20,000 a year to recruit and have access to those students. And so, an old school way to look at it is those companies like expect some amount of loyalty yes. from the students and they expect the career services or student advisors to um, to really um, kind of like enact that loyalty. And then advocate for the company yeah. with the students, you know, like those are the companies you're probably seeing on campus more often. Maybe their names are on some buildings, things like that. So Kim, my question is, after you send that email, is there... Any response that's required? What happens after the email? Yeah, pretty much the email is like, you renege. This makes this school look really bad. This is a bad thing that you did. Now, some schools will, some schools do have a rule where if you renege, like you will not be allowed to go to any of the school sponsored mm-hmm. career events. You know, they might, they might bar you from the career fair or bar you from being able to go to the events. And I think that. If there's like, if reneging is really rampant at your school, Mm -hmm. like this is a form of punishment that the school can enact upon students. At our school, we didn't do that. At our school, it was like kind of more of like a slap on the wrist. It was like, please don't do that. Like ever again, this makes us look really bad. You brought shame upon our community. Like that's, that's usually the vibe of the email Email. Yeah, that we, we, we would need to send. But like practically speaking, like we didn't keep a list and we would, you know, students, we didn't keep we didn't keep like a like a bar list or whatever for our for our career fairs and that sort of thing. And again, you only knew because the company reported it. Exactly. And like it happens sometimes. It's just the type of thing that does happen. I think a lot for a lot of companies, they really only get really upset if there starts to be like a pattern yes. at a school. Yes, that's when they're like WTF, like what's going on what's with going your on? But I mean, I've worked at many companies 
like in every single company, like we take rain eggs and mm-hmm. we kind of just, it's like a part of the game for us. And, um, you know, we just kind of roll with it, but like, you're right. There are some companies that are just like sensitive to it, especially if they don't have as big of a recruiting budget or they're and a then smaller company, they're smaller in company and it like impacts them. Cause I mean, you know, the smaller the company, the bigger the impact the reneggs yes. have. So I will say that. Yeah. Um, so maybe our next category of consequences is what are the consequences with your relationship with that company? Yeah. So I think for most students, a lot of them are really concerned about like, will I be added to some kind of like blacklist? Blacklist. You know, There's a lot for, of urban myths about yeah, this Yeah. You know, like if I renege, will I end up on this like list where I'm never able to recruit ever again? Yeah. And I mean like... I don't know. Like I've worked again at several companies. I have a lot of contacts at different companies and nobody keeps a literal blacklist. I've never heard of an actual existence of a database with names that's kept over time that they check on everybody. Like I just, I have never heard of that actually existing. Now, I don't think that you'll be able to recruit at that company within that year again. I don't think that you're going to be able to like, let's say you, uh, reneg a company for a different internship and then that internship decides to fold and you try to come back to the company you reneged on that's not gonna fly like that recruiter's gonna remember you know yeah um maybe even the next school year if the recruiter is still there and like really i would say this is where like the biggest consequence is Mm -hmm. is the consequence that you have on the personal relationships that you impacted through that recruiting process so that could be your recruiter um first foremost your recruiter Mm -hmm. um if you're like an intern who like built a relationship with your hiring manager and then you know accepted your return offer and then decide to renege on that for like something else for full-time like your your hiring manager is going to remember that definitely like that's like a really you built a relationship with that person yeah and you know you know sometimes when you're in that final offer stage too they'll introduce you to a bunch of people on the team to try and convince you to sign the offer they've invested time into you and so those are the like the real blacklist is really just however those people end up feeling about that behavior of yours. Cause those individuals will probably remember that. Yeah. Cause there are some, I mean, th- there are ways to renege elegantly. Correct. And then Lightly they're and politely. And then there are ways that people renege that just really leave a really bad taste in your mouth. Um, we didn't discuss this, but I'm going to say the fourth, the fourth thing that it really impacts is your peers. Actually, um, when you renege, point. one thing that is like a pretty negative consequence is like you could be taking jobs away from other people in your community if you hold on to too many offers for at this you know at the same time and then at the very end of the recruiting season decide to renege without enough time to like for your position to be replaced and i will yeah. say that is the one time where i am actually like po'd as a recruiter for the most part like i'm very like do what you know do what you got to do like i have recommendations on how to like write reneg emails like i'm i'm for the most part very much like take care of yourself but like if it comes at the expense of like me and my job and your your community like that's when i'm like that's pretty gross yeah right like some people literally there's like a trend of just like hoarding job offers and that's when i'm like yo i i do not i do not i'm not here for that that's not cool yeah and so your takeaway from this should be that there are consequences But they're not so bad such that if you really found a hugely better offer, it's going to make you so much happier. You should do what's right for yourself, Mm -hmm. but you should not treat reneging like it is a viable option for how to just get as many offers and then you'll figure out your choices later or whatever. Like you really should only do it if you absolutely have to. And like, you know, it is a big deal. It is a big deal to renege. It is. Like, you know, again, like you might hear these consequences and decide like, yes, I can live with those consequences, but it shouldn't be something that you just do lightly or like flippantly. Yes. So a couple situations, just because of how things time out that I get asked about is, you know, a lot of times, for example, if you did an internship, some companies will give you a return offer and you have to sign it right at the end of summer before you even mm-hmm. get to go through a recruiting season. Like they don't give you a lot of time to do it. Yes. That, that company is setting itself up to receive renegs. That's it's not the, they're that's, also not playing the fair game. That's not a good choice. <laughs> that's not a good choice. Like if your company is putting you in a situation where you can't even participate in the next recruiting season, like... Yeah. Red flags, homie, red flags. So, for example, if you were in that situation and you did sign your offer, I've had students come to me and be like, well, should I still go through the fall recruiting? Should I still interview? And I think you should know that reneging is 
bad, but I would probably still go through the interview process just in case there was some like big differential dream job that you really were after and that offer you signed maybe didn't feel like your fullest potential. It's okay to keep looking and maybe see if Renee is in and, your future. like, look, the reality is too, like in 2020, 2021, 2022, there were companies that were worth sending offers. And I actually think that just practically speaking, like, because they did that, the fair consequence is, is that more candidates are going to renege because more candidates aren't going to feel as secure, secure correct. about, you know, that was a promise that the company made to them as well. And they broke that yeah. promise. So. Yeah. And they broke that promise. So like, again, I, you know, we understand, I think it's, it's just so hard because every case is so different. It is. But in general, like I definitely empathize with, we both definitely empathize mm-hmm. with students on this idea that like you want to do what you can to protect yourself. Yes. So, you know, continuing to interview, especially if your company in the last two or three years has been known to rescind their offers to their new grads, that's, that's you protecting yourself. And I'm not going to knock you for that. Exactly. And so another question I get asked all the time is, you know, students are staring down the deadline of signing an offer. They just mm. have one offer. Maybe it's not the dream offer and they think there's still some opportunity to keep in interviewing. And so I have a lot of students ask me like, well, I never want to renege. Should I sign? Should I not sign this offer in the hopes that I get the better offer later? And you know what? If we were in a season of bounty, if this was a mm. year where I was like, yeah, I mean, you'll, you're will you going to get a ton of interviews. You're going to get a ton of offers. I'd be like, yeah, like just cut it loose. Yeah. Right? Like if you know for sure you're like not going to want to work there, but... You know, this season, I think that if you're in a position where like this is your one offer and like you're not getting a lot of bites from other companies so far, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, bro, like sign that offer, protect yourself, give yourself an option. Yeah, um, I agree. And I think that that I think. And again, if you and if you have to renege like later later down the road, like that's just that it is what it is. It is what it is. And, you know. We've only really talked about money, but the reality is that lives change. There's things that could happen in your life that just could cause you to need to renege. And you should never put your alliance with a recruiter at a company over your personal needs or your family's needs. So the reality is reneging happens. And sometimes you have to pull back on that promise. And the best you can do is write a polite and respectful email and apologize, mm-hmm. but you should always still make sure you're looking out for your own interests. Yeah. First like, I mean, I've had students who like couldn't do the internship because they needed to, you know, take care of like a loved one mm-hmm. or just like someone gets engaged and they're just like, I really don't want to do long distance yeah. with my person. Like I need, I need to be able to be where they are. And like, yeah. that's, and at the end of the day, like, yeah, like you should, do what's best for you because companies are always going to do what's best for them. Yes. And like, I'll sit here and say like, yeah, like are renegs annoying for me as a recruiter? Am I like, does it make more work for me? Like, yes, yes, it does. And at the same time, like we are all human and like, I will always tell a student that they should do what is best for them. Absolutely. So the answer is a renege has real consequences, real consequences, but as long as you treat it, as such and give that decision the weight that it deserves, you should always make sure that you are advocating for yourself, doing what's best for you first and foremost, just like the companies are doing for themselves. Yeah. I think that's it for us, you guys. Yeah. Good luck with the recruiting season so far. I hope you don't find yourself in a situation where you need to renege. I really don't, I really don't wish that situation upon anybody. Nobody has a good time. (laughs) No, it's not a good time for anybody, but you know, you, you do you boo. You do you. All right. Until next time, I am still Kim. And I'm Casey. We'll see you later. Bye.